The Studer On-Air 1500 provides a number of unique USB-related features. Built into the console's DSP engine is an integrated WAV file player recorder for playback from and recording to USB memory devices such as a USB stick or hard drive. With a compatible USB drive connected, green LEDs light in the recorder's control area. First up, we have the Jingle Player, which is a stereo playback-only device intended for short audio clips such as station identifier jingles and sound effects. The jingles are triggered from dedicated switches in the central section. The Jingle Player is placed as a logical input on the surface as any other audio source would be. On my desk, the Jingle Player has been allocated to Strip 4. With the channel on and open, all I need to do is press my dedicated Jingle button and my effect plays. There is also a separate track player which can be used for playing back stereo audio files from a USB memory device. Normally these files are longer than the jingles. They may be news reports or interviews for example. The track player supports file sizes up to 4 gigabytes and can play back with the jingle player simultaneously from the same USB device. On my desk here, I have the track player in strip 5. With the logical input mapped to the surface, I can then load my audio files from the strip encoder. The loading of the playback file is a similar process to assigning a new input to the surface. In order to load a particular file, I need to first select input from the function select options. If I then touch the rotary encoder for strip 5, where my track player is assigned, the first option that appears isn't mics, as it would be for my other inputs. It's files. If I then select that with the key, I can then use the encoder to search through all of the available files and select the one I want. Once selected, the file will automatically play back when I turn the channel on and bring the fader up. And welcome to I can pause playback by turning the channel off and resume by turning the channel back on. I can also pause and resume playback by pulling the fader back down and back up again, or turning the rotary encode key off and on. Finally, the track recorder can be used for recording stereo audio files to a USB memory device. The console offers a very simple and easy way of recording from a number of sources. The meter bridge houses the key controls for the built-in USB recorder. PGM bus selects the main program bus as the record source. REC bus selects the dedicated record bus. In this case, only the channels that have been specifically routed to the dedicated record bus will be recorded. REC and STOP are used to start and stop the recording. Pressing the record info button switches over the seven segment display to show the remaining record time available on the USB memory device or the last recorded file name. So let's take a look at that in practice. In order to make a very simple recording of the program output, I press the PGM bus button here to select the program bus as the record source. Then all I have to do is press record and the recording process begins. If I need to pause the recording process, I simply press the stop button. I can then resume the record, creating one continuous file by pressing record again. When I need to stop recording, I simply double press the stop button. From my track player, I can now load the previously recorded file. If I play the recorded file back, you'll hear my mic source and the music, both of which were routed to, to the program the bus. Process, I press the rec button recording, creating one... I may have a situation where I want to make a recording of only the DJ and the guest. In this case, I could route them simultaneously to both the program bus and the record bus. This is done very quickly and easily by routing the source channels to the record bus using the dedicated keys in the strip and then selecting the rec bus as the recorder source. I can then start, pause and stop the recording process as I did previously. One other very useful feature that the recorder has is the off-air mode. Before I route my source channel to the record bus, I activate the off-air record mode. When I then route my channels to the bus, they are automatically unrouted from the PGM and N-X buses. This way, I can conduct an interview with a guest off-air to play back at a later point in my show, 
while I continue to broadcast music from my playout system. Another powerful feature available via one of the Nano S Core's USB ports is the multi-channel USB I.O. With this port connected, the core can be used by a third-party PC or Mac as an 8-in, 8-out audio interface, allowing you to play back and record to your DAW of choice. Any output of the console, including the record and program buses, can be routed to and from this I.O.